In this video, I'm going to convert every vanilla macro I use on my Hunter to the Classic macro system. If any of these macros don't work in Classic when it comes out, I'll be sure to leave an updated version in the comments. With that, let's jump into it. This is the macro that I use to start every fight. It does everything at once. It targets the nearest enemy, starts your auto shot, sends your pet to attack, and uses your pet's charge or dash ability. This makes it great for leveling. For retail players, it might seem strange to have a keybind that doesn't cast any spells, but trust me when I say, this macro is very important in vanilla. If you start every fight with a giant aim shot, you're gonna get threat, and you're gonna wipe your group very, very often. This macro allows you to start DPSing slowly and avoid threat. I highly recommend binding this macro to two. It is by far the best place for it. This is because auto shot has a hidden 0.5 second cast time. This is why we treat it like a spell and have a dedicated keybind. Now this part of the macro right here is the only part that I'm not sure about. This is because this macro hasn't been necessary ever since auto shot was changed in Cataclysm. This means that I have to go off the syntax that was used by players in Burning Crusade and the Wrath of the Lich King. That being said, I fully expect this to be what the Classic WoW dev team gives us to work with on Classic Launch. The exclamation point before auto shot is important because it allows us to spam this macro without fear of canceling our auto shot. All right, so this right here is my pet control macro. It uses call pet if your pet isn't out and places it on passive and follow. Anytime you press it after that, it will stop your pet's attack and bring it back to you. In order to play hunter effectively, you need to have your pet on passive at all times and manually tell it when to attack, which is something we actually took care of in our first macro. Now, the way I have this macro set up, when you cast men pet using shift, it won't stop your pet's attack, which allows your pet to keep attacking while you heal it in combat. The macro will automatically switch to revive pet instead of men pet when your pet dies. I place this on the keybind X because in my mind X is backwards and it just makes sense to bring my pet back. If you're worried about losing your keybind for sitting, I recommend binding sit to shift space. Also, make sure you don't keybind anything to shift X or the macro will stop working. For this next macro, all it does is send your pet to attack. This is useful for avoiding fights by sending your pet to grab everything in front of you so the mobs don't attack you while you run by. You can then use your pet control macro to bring your pet back. This is especially useful with the talent Bestial Swiftness to increase your pet movement speed. It's also great for sending your pet in first to establish threat before you start shooting. Do not underestimate the strength of this talent while leveling. Getting your pet onto targets faster can mean an extra auto attack in every fight, which is way more useful than 4% damage. I place this on the keybind mouse wheel down. The extra targeting logic here might seem strange, but in vanilla, pet attack target would also target the nearest enemy, which I don't want. I'm not sure if this will be the case in classic, but either way, it's pretty easy to hit the mouse wheel on accident and send your pet on a rampage. I've set this macro up to only send my pet in if I'm already targeting something. The classic version is actually smarter. It will only send your pet to attack if targeting a harmful enemy specifically, making the macro much safer to use on mouse wheel. If you're worried about losing your keybind for zooming in and out, I recommend setting zoom in to semicolon and zoom out to apostrophe. This macro is pretty simple. It targets the nearest enemy and then casts Hunter's Mark. I use this on scroll wheel up. If I ever want to start a fight and I need my pet to get aggro first, I simply scroll up to target and cast Hunter's Mark and then down to send my pet to attack. I want to cover something really quick for these attack macros. A very common strategy on Retail WoW is to bind pet attack into all of your abilities. I don't recommend this for classic and there's a good reason for it. Sometimes you need to DPS in a dungeon without sending your pet in because your pet could pull extra mobs from melee range. Also, pets are pretty vulnerable in vanilla. This is before pets had built in AoE damage reduction. So it was common for hunters and raids to use wolves on passive while using Furious Howl to buff their group or to use wind serpents because of their ranged spell, Lightning Breath. This would keep the pet near the hunter and out of harm's way on certain boss fights, but this only works if you don't macro pet attack into all of your abilities. This macro combines all of your melee abilities into one button. The order is very important. We cast Raptor Strike first because it improves your next melee swing just like Heroic Strike. If you don't do this, Counter Attack and Mongoose Bite will start your auto attack before Raptor Strike can be applied, and then you'll have to sit around and wait for your next melee swing. Counter Attack always has a higher priority than Mongoose Bite because it does more damage. 
This macro will still work even if you don't have the talent for counterattack. If you aren't playing an orc, you can remove Blood Fury from the macro. Once again, for this wing clip macro, I have placed these in the optimal order so I wouldn't change it. We use Raptor Strike first because wing clip also starts your auto attack. We prioritize counterattack before wing clip because counterattack roots the target, which is more effective than a slow. This macro isn't just for PvP, it can safely replace your wing clip spell in all content. With both of these melee macros, you no longer need to keybind counterattack or mongoose bite, as they'll both be used automatically. I still keep them on my bars so I can see when they get used, just without a keybind. Traps can only be used out of combat in vanilla WoW. This means that if you want to use a trap in combat, you have to use feign death first. All trap macros require a double press if used in combat. The first time you press it, it's going to use feign death, and the second time you press it, it's going to be using your trap. But in all honesty, just spam it. It will only use feign death if you're in combat, which means you're safe to use this macro to replace your freezing trap entirely. Now this macro is useful in PvP for obvious reasons, but it's actually useful in PvE as well because it allows you to keep an enemy trapped twice. Once before the fight, and once during the fight. We include pet passive and pet follow in our freezing trap because we don't want our pet to break our freezing trap on accident, but we don't need this for frost trap. This macro makes sure that you don't cancel your aspect of the cheetah on accident. In vanilla, if you press your aspects twice, it will turn them off. The exclamation point before aspect of the cheetah makes this macro safe to spam. Now for aspect of the hawk, I place cancel aura aspect of the cheetah in here because it guarantees to remove cheetah immediately, even if I press this button during a global cooldown or I get stunned before it goes off. This gives me the highest possible chance to avoid being dazed. Normally, Aspect of the Hawk won't remove Cheetah until it goes off. This guarantees that it will be removed immediately, not just when Hawk is cast. Sometimes, part of your job as a hunter is to pull raid bosses. This is because you have the furthest range in the game. We need to do as little damage as possible on the pull, so the tank can get aggro right away. At level 60, your lowest damage ability is rank 1 Arcane Shot. We then clear target to make sure that we don't shoot on accident, since Arcane Shot will start your auto shot. You can then retarget the boss after the tank establishes threat. This next macro takes advantage of the new retail system. It casts Scatter Shot at your mouse over if you have one, otherwise it casts at your target. Now most of you have probably seen this in the format at mouse over exists. I use harm instead of exists because harm implies exists already. It's also smarter than mouse over exists because it will ignore allied mouse overs. This way, if you accidentally mouse over an ally, it will still let you cast scattershot at your target instead of giving you an error. If cursor macros end up being usable in classic, I highly recommend using it on flare. This will cast flare instantly at your mouse without the need to click a second time. When you start raiding, consider changing your attack macros to no longer target the nearest enemy. This will make sure that you don't accidentally pull while you wait around and listen to raid instructions. I recommend doing this anytime you enter a dungeon or raid, even while leveling. Well there you have it. That's pretty much all of the macros that I can think of that'll be useful for Hunter in Classic WoW. If you're looking for more, subscribe to see more content in the future. If you'd like to support me and the channel, please check me out on Patreon. Otherwise, thank you so much for your comments. I really appreciate everyone that gives me feedback. Later!